Hey everyone, and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Nathan, and I will be your host for today. Thank you so much for joining me once again on the podcast. It is wonderful to have you here. Just a reminder, Fuel for the Harvest exists to fuel the harvest. At Forge, our vision is more kingdom laborers, which comes out of Matthew 9, 35-38. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, and we desire to fuel those laborers, to, to fuel those workers out in the harvest. We believe that anybody, regardless of educational status, age, social status, uh, anybody who submits to Jesus Christ as Lord has everything they need because they have Jesus to go and advance the kingdom in ordinary everyday places. So that's why we exist and uh, so thankful to have you joining the podcast once again. Today, I, I just wanted to take some time to chat about something that has been burning on my heart this week. So uh, interestingly enough, I have found myself with the opportunity to be up close to large groups of young adults this week, and it has been awesome. I've been watching as God is transforming lives, and I've been watching as he is planting seeds that I am absolutely certain will come to fruition at some point in the future. And as part of our time together uh, with these young people, one of the cool opportunities that came about was they, they gathered uh, for a whole day to pray. And man, what an amazing thing to see two, three, four hundred young people gathering together to earnestly seek the Lord and ask Him to use them to uh, to to move in this world, uh, they ended up praying through uh, the Lord's prayer as their time. And man, it was awesome! It was powerful! It was so cool to see a bunch of 18, 19, 20 year olds gathered together in one place, seeking the Lord in a unified way and desiring to see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And there was some really cool things that came out of it. Uh, one of the things is just hearing and seeing the hearts of these students as they're seeking Jesus. Um, there, there was a lot of really deep, authentic, powerful prayer that happened during this time. So that was awesome. It was also cool to see just the amazing diversity of the body of Christ. Uh, you see... You, you can hear in how people pray just the the differences in how God has been up close to each one of us um, and the different words that we use to describe God as our Father. And you, you've probably seen it in, even in your own local church context, just the amazing diversity of our God and his desire to be up close to his people and how he has shown himself faithful to all of these people. It often comes out in even the name that people use to describe God and the way that they pray and the earnestness with which they seek him. So it was just awesome to see that, powerful uh, to see so many gathered in Jesus' name to pray. And there was worship and, and prayer and, and scripture reading. And it, it was a powerful time. But, but there was one thing that I kept observing in all of these prayers, and not all of them, but like a, a solid like 80%. Um, of them that I thought was worth discussing here on the podcast, and I wanted it to, I want to just kind of bring it to our attention, if at the very least, to start the conversation. The, the thing that I observed was simply this. There was this tendency for those who were praying to pray to God and thank Him for theological concepts. Uh, Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you that you are who you are. Uh, thank you that you you are just you're the the god who loves that you're the god who serves that you are all of these things and don't hear me wrong no problem with that i praise the lord that he is all of those things he is a god of grace he is a god of mercy he is a god of love all uh, hallelujah praise the lord it wasn't really what they said that that bugged me but what really just didn't get prayed for and that was the action side of christianity uh, the the whole room was was full of praises for for who God was and 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 the nature of his character and and the gloriousness of of his plan and his purposes but so few prayed for things like courage to proclaim the gospel to those who haven't heard it so few prayed for God's will to be done around the world people of other faiths and other religions to encounter the living Jesus and be changed so few prayed to be equipped 
So few, uh, almost nobody actually prayed that. I, I didn't hear a single one. Uh, so few prayed for the action side of Christianity. And uh, so don't hear me wrong here. Obviously, you're saved by grace, not by works, so that no one can boast. We affirm that biblical truth, that historical biblical truth at Forged. We affirm that on this podcast, so don't hear me wrong. Uh, but if you and I read the Gospels in the same way, if you and I read the letters of Paul and the other epistles and the other letters of the New Testament in the same way, it is inescapable to come to the conclusion that Jesus doesn't just want us to hear things. He just he doesn't just want us to know things. He wants us to do things. <laughs> and uh, I just found it striking. I found it striking that in a room of four or five hundred students, maybe 300 students, I don't know, there was a lot, in a room of like three to five hundred students that no, no one, I didn't hear a single one pray that they would be empowered to do the work that God is calling them to do. Isn't that, isn't that striking? Isn't that, I feel like it should be strange to us. I feel like that should be almost off-putting. Um, and I, 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 and I'm bringing it to our attention because I, I, I have a sense that this group of students is just a, a, a micro look at the wider body of Christ. I suspect that they represent a large portion of the body of Christ who is so thankful for everything that God has done for them. And I too, don't hear me wrong, I too am thankful for everything God has done for me. But somehow, some way, have forgotten that he's calling us to work and act and do things in this world. Um, you'll take note in Ephesians chapter 5 that or no, Ephesians, it's in Ephesians, I think it might be actually chapter 4, where, where Paul is saying, and he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and shepherds to equip the body of Christ. We, we've gotten that word, uh, I think I've said this on the podcast before, but we've gotten that word confused with words like encourage, and encourage is great, and uh, entertain, and I'm not so sure about entertaining, but those words are definitely not equip. Uh, and it's almost as if we have spent a lot of time thinking about what it means to be a Christian and not very much time being Christians. <laughs> um, the, the founder and, and president of Forge, Dwight Robertson, likes to say, you know, at the end of your life when you're standing before Jesus, it won't be well thought of good and faithful servant. It, it, it won't be well considered or well learned or well read. It will be well done, good and faithful servant. And I think that doing things is so important. And not doing things in order to earn our salvation, but doing things out of response. Doing things out of response to what Jesus has done for us. In the book of Ephesians, uh, Paul begins to go through everything that Jesus has done for us. And then in response, he says, hey, now you should do the things that Jesus did. And uh, he says that in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Be imitators of God, therefore, as beloved children, and walk in the way of love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. There's this obvious call to respond, to take action, to do. So, and the more you look at the New Testament, you'll see that time and time again. You'll see it in the teachings of Jesus. You'll see it in the teachings of Paul. James, obviously, James notably, uh, P Peter, Hebrews, it's everywhere. There's always this, hey, as a response to everything that Jesus has done for you, you should take action. You should do something. You should live in a particular way. Anyway, so I'm listening to all these prayers of these students and I'm thinking to myself, man, my heart is burning. My heart is aching for the fact that th there's, uh, it's, it's almost like half of the half of the Christian life is missing in the words that I'm hearing. Praise God for everything he's done for us, but God, please empower me to do the things that you're calling me to do. It's so much more than just thinking about it. It's doing something about it. Uh, we've talked about this on the podcast before also, but uh, I, I think it's worth bringing up again. There is this fascinating reality where in modern Christianity, especially in the West, we have equated maturity in Christ with knowledge of theology or knowledge of the Bible. Like, and when I say knowledge, I don't mean like a really full, I mean like literally just 
we have files in our brain cells or whatever way you want to say that we know a lot about Christianity. We've equated that to maturity, but I don't really think that that's how Jesus or the gospel writers or or the New Testament writers would have viewed mature Christians. And it certainly isn't how I view mature Christians. When I think of the word maturity, I think of those who are not just thinking about Christianity, not just knowing a lot about Christianity, but taking action, doing things. I, I would look in, in a room full of Christians, the ones I would point at as mature are the ones who are obeying the good news of Jesus. They're the ones who are out proclaiming the gospel. They're the ones who are loving their enemies, loving their wives, loving their children, uh, praying for those who persecute them. They're the ones who are doing. They're the ones who are serving. And obviously there are those out there who are doing all that great stuff and don't have any real relationship with Jesus. So you can't have one without the other. So I'm not advocating somehow that we just switch and, and swing the pendulum to the other side and just be like, it's a workspace gospel. No, 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 no. But those who have a mature relationship with Jesus should have some kind of outflow in their life. I think that's what John chapter 15 is talking about when it says, it, when Jesus says, if you abide in me, you will bear fruit. So the, the time that we spend up close with Jesus will produce fruit in our lives. And I, I don't think it's any accident that Jesus used the word fruit. And then that later in Galatians chapter five, Paul also uses the word fruit to describe the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So our, the fruit of our life emerges from our relationship with Jesus. If there is no fruit, if you look at a tree and there's no fruit coming off that tree, or if you look at a branch of a tree, that's better. If you look at the branch of a tree and there's no fruit coming off that branch, you would wonder if that branch is even still attached to the trunk because it's a normal thing for branches on fruit trees to bear fruit. And if they're not bearing fruit, there's probably something wrong. There's probably some lack of connection to the root. There's probably some lack of connection to the trunk of that tree. And I think that's exactly what Jesus is saying in John chapter 15, when he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. I fear that this dynamic that we've set up in, in many Christian circles where maturity is equal to knowledge rather than action. I'm convinced that you could be, you could have very minimal knowledge of the Bible, very minimal knowledge of who Jesus is. I'm not advocating that you just don't learn anything about the Bible. I'm saying it's conceivable that there's somebody out there who's illiterate and has minimal access to the to the word of God, but is obeying the commands of Jesus that would be more mature than someone who has a master's degree in biblical studies or theology, someone who knows the word of God backwards and forwards, who's memorized books of the Bible, who has, um, it's conceivable that there's someone out there who really knows a lot about the Bible, who's less mature, less spiritually mature than someone who knows very little about the Bible, but is obeying all of Jesus's commands. What emerges is this really interesting idea. We have trained people to believe that maturity is equal to knowledge. What that means is that I can honor God just by thinking about him and doing nothing else. That my obedience to God somehow becomes the reality that I'm thinking a lot about God rather than me actually doing the things that Jesus commanded me to do. And is it wrong to think about God? Absolutely not. Let's dwell on him. Let's meditate on him. Let's, let's think about him and, and, and glory and the wonder of his splendor. There's nothing wrong with the fact that a bunch of kids prayed the attributes to God back to him. There's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong and what I'm sensing and what I'm trying to elaborate on in this podcast is to say, in addition, we should probably take action. <laughs> we should probably do something. We should probably, uh, there, there, there's a whole other s side of what Jesus is calling us to do more than just thinking about him, which is obviously taking action. So that's my idea. Uh, and I might be wrong about it, but here's the, here's the thing. I, I really believe that somehow, somewhere along the way, we as Christians have somehow gotten things out of order. Either we're so intently focused on the actions 
And, 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 and I'm also not advocating that we somehow reverse engineer Christianity to be like, so I start with all the things that I'm supposed to be doing and then I work my way slowly back to Jesus. That would absolutely be a workspace gospel. So that's, that's definitely not what I'm advocating. I'm simply advocating and saying, listen, if we're really abiding in Jesus, wouldn't it make sense that we're bearing the fruit he said we would bear? I mean, I think it does. With that, I, I hope that we as the body of Christ can wake up to the fact that Jesus is calling us to do more than just think about him. He's calling us to take action, to obey every one of his commands. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining this latest episode of Feel for the Harvest. God bless.